Hello, my name is Kareem Nagy, and I play the tambourine. Everybody in the Western world may think that the tambourine is this easy, simple instrument that people who don't play any other instrument focus on the tambourine so that they can participate with the lifestyle of the musician. Well, in the Arab world, where I come from, the country of Egypt specifically, this is called the Rik, and this is a classical music instrument. Yes, you need to use your fingers and study it. So this is not the quote-unquote simple tambourine that people dismiss. This is a very special and intricate instrument, and I will help show that from these two very elaborate Arabic rhythms that you count to 13 beats. I'll make a piece of music. It's called 13, Teletoshar, using the two Arab beats, Zarrafot, which means in Arabic, <clears throat> envelopes, and Murabba, which means in Arabic, corners. This is called 13. Music as therapy. Well, it is like that in the Arab world. I've noticed, as have many other listeners, that certain things, when they're played, it can, you know, manipulate your emotions. And I don't just mean like, um, you know, music as a distraction or a, a way to forget your sorrows. But no, how about music as a way to get into those emotions, to ride them and be absorbed by them. So we have this beautiful system in Arabic. It's called the maqam. Maqam, 
Well, each maqam is a scale, but each scale does something to you. It can make you feel uh, uh, heavy or serious or bright and cheerful and, or all kinds of things, not just in between, but beyond those, depending where you go. And here's the beautiful part is that we have notes between those black and white keys on that piano. Arabic music, we have more than 20 notes in an octave. So I'm going to explore these maqam right now, go back and forth and help to reach that state of enchantment that we call in Arabic tarab, tarab, musical enchantment. So I'll use the maqam to get to tarab and share it with you as well.
every birthday party, every religious celebration, every sporting event, every political rally can benefit from music, percussion, chanting. So this duff or bandir, that it could be called, a frame drum, can help in that wedding the bride and groom be excited for this union and not be daunted by the commitment. It can help the birthday person be excited about getting older. It can help the sporting team be motivated to win this one or try hard. And it can help the political rally for everybody chanting at the same time, demanding for the same time. And it could help the praise and the devotion feel that momentum towards connection. This is the Duff. So in Syria there are these two towns, Dumar <clears throat> al-Hama, and the loved one is all the way in the other town. Okay, so he's asking the bird, drop me in one of these two towns so I can get together. And please send a message that I have for her a watch and a diamond ring. So you know what that means, right? Marriage. 
someone else to represent you especially someone else who it's not in their interest for you to look appealing well I as an Arab Muslim have been represented by the media portrayed as an irrational extremist thanks before that, I was represented by film in Hollywood. Represented as a sultanic flying carpet magician maniac. Thanks. Well, what's the source of all this? Orientalism. The othering of people from my part of the world homogenized into one big exotic clump. Let's hear about it. Sesa Sesame, open Sesame Street, Aladdin's lab granting him three wishes. Princess Jasmine, dark skin and delicious. In the desert, the dance of the seven veils, seven women for every one male. Ancient Baghdad, one zero zero one nights, centuries later, home to all the airstrikes. Snake charmer under, under a desert moon, Sinbad the sailor, singing an exotic tune. Cross the Sahara in a caravan, slower than a minivan, but that would sink in quicksand. Casbah Bazaar, home to Hocus Pocus by Frankincense, Hoopla, Otis, or Thomas Homer, the magician, and Abdullah the genie, use their sorcery to weaponize the genie. Names are longer than the Silk Road, and the camel teams can carry any load. A discount import oriental rug store is where they plan the holy carpet war. Huh. Sheikh Sultan's quest for the black gold. We don't want their religion, only want their money. Simultaneously dangerous and sexy. Oriental carpet makes for good decorage, but it's not comfy for oriental massage. With Shahrazad, give me an exotic dent in Casablanca, Alhambra, or France. Della Della Qua, Qua, painted naked harem space, all of, all of a place. South of Europe, yet labeled East, Arabian, Persian, Indian, Chinese, Thai, all close enough for a carpet to fly. The East goes from Morocco to Japan, but the West goes from Austria to Washington? Anything exotic is labeled the Orient, and most of the world lives in that nomad's tent, but no one would trade their trees for sand. The West is happy to just broker the land, often fascinated and intermittently loyal while filling their lamp with Arabian Sing it for us. That was so good. One more time, a little faster.
together. Hiwar. Hiwar in Arabic means a dialogue. The dialogue is what helps people understand each other. Each party feels heard, visible, appreciated. The act of dialogue allows the uh, assuage of conflict to help people continue to at least try and understand each other. But we cannot make our point, we cannot make our point, unless we have the internal dialogue first, to understand where we are in this belief. For the right hand and the left hand to be able to work together, for one side of your consciousness and the other to be able to function in concert. So this, with the help of the Egyptian finger symbols called Sagat, meaning the domes. I will have the personal hiwar, the dialogue.
I've grown up with this symbol my whole life. I understand that every culture has hands and well, here in the United States, this is one of those, you know, really provocative, cool symbols that people like to use that they, they say it protects them. Well, <clears throat> you mean kind of like a global insurance kind of protection? Well, at heart, I suppose if, if that makes you feel good, but you know, I've, I've had this symbol in my life you know, uh, and it's really what it means is um, it's to protect you against jealousy, not necessarily other people's jealousy. It's to uh, remind you not to make other people jealous. Well, not to brag and talk about all the great things you have to someone who may be needy or suffering. I mean, don't eat a sandwich on a bus. I mean, those people maybe haven't had food in a while. Th this kind of thing where we provoke people to be jealous of us by uh, showing off and, uh, you know, being, um, let's say, uh, lacking humility. This is the hand of Fatima. That's what we call it in Egypt, all over the Arab world. It could be called uh, el kaf the palm, or Khamsa, from the numbers. Wahid, itnin, talata, arba, khamsa. So this hand, it, it tells me to be humble and not make other people jealous. Not just to protect me from other people's bad behavior. Well, don't incite the feeling. You know, we don't know if this is a, a right hand or a left hand, so it may not be pointed at me, it may not be pointed at others. It's best to keep this dance of humility and this duet, uh, you know, on the, on the humble side, all right? So let me enjoy the hand of Fatima with the hands of Karim. I'm going to play a rhythm that I really love called Daur Hindi, the Indian cycle, in Arabic, seven beats. citizen in my 20s. I'm an immigrant from Egypt and I like being an American. I like being Egyptian. I believe that all the identities can coexist. I voted in every single election. I still play the music from my homeland. And I really hope to share my culture with everyone here in the United States. The culture of the Arab people from North Africa and Western Asia, and even my Muslim religion, all while being American, because I don't believe that things are exclusive of one another. That's the beauty of this existence we found. Just like this kufiya scarf that I'm wearing, it is a Bedouin pattern with the American colors. I haven't forgotten my background. Pretty much I play only Arabic music. And I will never forget about where I live. And I will always take it seriously. To vote, to participate, to be involved in American life, in the search for 
diversity, and the embracing of all cultures. Morocco, Mauritania, Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, Sudan, Somalia, Djibouti, Comoros, Yemen, Oman, Qatar, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, and Iraq all of these countries sharing one language, many different versions of accents, of food, of style, of rhythm, unified by the classic Arabic language, yet diverse in so many expressions. Let's hear some of these rhythms. Morocco.
United Arab Emirates. In the south of Egypt, the men like to carry around an asaya. An asaya is a reed, very solid, like bamboo but not hollow, a reed coming from a river, probably the Nile. And this asaya is used for many things, for example, pointing at something that's further away than your arm, or protecting yourself from someone who wants to challenge you, or acting out certain things in the village life, such as the water wheel or the rowing the boat. The asaya is for storytelling, and it's symbolic, but also very useful.
Thank you.